Hey, what's up guys? So this is the OpsBot Tiny2. It's a 4K PTZ webcam with a whole bunch of AI features on board. And if you're a regular to the channel, I'm sure you've heard me rave about this camera before. I've reviewed quite a few top of the line 4K webcams on the channel this past year. Most, if not all of them were AI powered in some way or another, but this is the one that keeps finding its way back to the top of my monitor. And this is the one I choose as my daily driver because it's that good. However, the number one comment I received from people who are interested in this camera has been, it's expensive. And that is why the good people at OpsBot decided to bring us the Tiny2 Lite, which comes in at just a little over half the price of its big brother. But when we take a closer look at the features, it's actually not as light as you might think, and it might just be the best option for most people. And to find out how good it actually is, we will be comparing it to its main competitors in the same price range, the very popular Logitech MX Brio and the Brio 4K Stream Edition. Let's ramble. Hey guys, so yeah, like I said in the intro, the OpsBot Tiny2 has been an absolute dream of a camera with a ton of features. I used to be one of those guys that had a whole rig installed with a full-blown mirrorless camera inside of a teleprompter, especially during the pandemic when we all started working from home more, you know, just to make sure I would have the best possible video quality on my business calls, making me look as professional as possible. The downside of a setup like that is that it takes up half of your desk, not to mention the very high cost involved. Thankfully, around the same time, a handful of webcam producers also realized that increase in demand for very high quality video calls and started to develop 4K webcams that produce an image that is pretty much just as good as the image coming out of a mirrorless camera, but at a fraction of the price. OpSpot being one of those companies, and in my opinion, their Tiny2 webcam has been the best overall pick. But yeah, even though it's a lot cheaper than rigging up a mirrorless camera setup, the price of this webcam can still be a bit prohibitive for some users. Now, the reason why the price of the Tiny2 is a bit on the higher side is because it's absolutely packed with features, both in terms of hardware as well as AI features. Now, the Tiny2 Lite cut down on some of those features in order to arrive at a much friendlier price, but in my opinion, it kept most, if not all of the features that made the Tiny2 such a great webcam. Just like the Tiny2, it delivers a resolution of up to 4K at 30 frames a second or 1080 at 60 frames. It has built-in dual omnidirectional microphones with noise reduction. It can shoot both landscape and portrait mode, which is great for social media stuff, as well as upside down, which is nice if you want to mount the camera to a ceiling or something. It has HDR and autofocus, although a little less fancy than on the Tiny2 itself. And it has single native ISO instead of dual, which theoretically should give the big boy Tiny2 the edge in low light situations. But all in all, very similar specs on both cameras. The biggest differences are probably gonna be in the AI features. And that is why I think most people will be perfectly happy with the Tiny2 Lite because of the missing features are quite niche, like whiteboard mode and desk mode, hand track, tracking, zone tracking. These are not features I think many of us will use on a regular basis, if at all. And most people will be perfectly fine living without them. Now let's quickly unbox this OpsBot Tiny2 Lite so you can see the main differences in terms of the actual hardware. Right, so inside the box, we get a little instructions manual, which as always, I hope we won't be needing. Then in this little box, there's a little USB-C to USB-C cable, as well as a USB-C to A adapter in case you're still rocking a good old USB-A port. And of course, there's the actual camera. At first glance, it really does look quite similar to the Tiny2, but when we hold it side by side with the Tiny2, you'll see that it's actually a bit bigger. It's a couple of grams lighter though, so I guess the name light refers to the weight as well as the reduction in features. And as you can see, the Tiny2 has that tally light on the front, but both of them have the built-in dual omnidirectional mics with noise reduction. And on the back, the light has this little pattern, but I think that's purely aesthetic and both have USB-C sockets, which is cool because theoretically that means I can easily swap the cameras out using the cable that's already in my computer. Now the Tiny2 attaches magnetically to the base, which comes separate whereas the Tiny2 Lite has the base built in. So you basically just clamp it to the screen like you would most webcams. However, both have a quarter inch thread, so they both can be mounted to third-party accessories like tripods. So yeah, all in all, the differences visually are quite minimal, and this is where the comparison to the Tiny2 ends as well. I did do a full review of the Tiny2 laying out all of the features, so if you're interested in that, I'll link it up here or at the end of the video. Anyway, for the purpose of this video, I think it makes much more sense to compare the Tiny2 Lite 
light to its main competitors in the same price range, the very popular Logitech MX Brio and the Brio 4K Stream Edition. But before we do that, let's give my friend E a call to see how the Opsibot Tiny 2 looks and sounds on the opposite side of Europe. Hello? Hey man, how are you doing? Hey, good, how are you? <laughs> what are you up to? I'm pretty much just working on a video right now. Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, thanks for the call. I just wanted to uh, to test. I have two Opspot cameras. I'm not going to tell you which one is which, and uh, I just wanted to get your opinion on the on the image quality of right. of, of the two. Good. So this is the first one you're looking at now. So uh, uh, obviously, what I see on my screen, I don't think is the same as what you see on your screen. So can you describe what it looks like? I see very natural colors, barely any highlight blowouts or anything that might be of a concern. As someone who is shaving his head, I can appreciate <laughs> you not shining like crazy on the other side. So uh, I, overall, it's a very soft image, which is very untypical for, for a webcam for the most part. Um, so I'm just going to switch to the other one now and uh, yeah. see if uh, there's a big difference for you. So this is the next one. And you okay. should see... Yeah, right off the bat, the difference is huge. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so what, this, what the, this very much looks like a webcam. This looks like a webcam. This actually looks as if your background, like you're on a green screen or something, like the background is cut oh, out. Okay, so the other one was better in your opinion? The other one to me was way better. That's interesting. So now I'm back on the other one. Yeah. How does that look? This one is way better to me. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm going to tell you why now, because the, okay. the one that you didn't like as much is the Opsbot, um, the, the OG, the big one, so and the more expensive one, actually. And okay. uh, the light one is the one you say looks much better. To yeah. me, this looks very natural. Uh, this doesn't look like a webcam, it looks like I'm sort of like right there. That's so cool. Uh, while the other one separates you very distinctly from the background and you look as if you're on a green screen or something. Yeah, there. you know, the, the thing with these Opsart cameras is they have like a ton of features so you can adjust yeah. and readjust and everything. So I have everything on auto. I don't know in, to what extent I could improve it, but it's really funny to hear that the, the light that we're looking at now is better in terms of image quality, at least mm -hmm. apparently so, because it's uh, a little bit over half of the price. All right, pick this one. The light. Yeah. 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 That's really useful. I needed the opinion of somebody on the other side, not just of yeah. the other side of Europe, but the other side of the screen. <laughs> yeah, I did <need> <laughs> Thanks, man. All right. Cheers. Right, so as you can see, the Tiny 2 Lite is an absolute little powerhouse, but how does it stack up to the Logitech cameras? To find out, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of these three cameras, and I'll throw in the big boy Tiny 2 as well, just for the sake of comparison. And guys, definitely feel free to give me your thoughts down in the comments below as well. So right out of the gate, you can see some clear differences in terms of image. I have to say the Logitech Brio Stream Edition looks pretty awful. It looks overexposed and the white balance seems off. Now, my first instinct would be to go into the app settings and probably fix most of those things, but it looks like this camera cannot be adjusted, at least not on the Mac. All settings are grayed out in Logitech G Hub and in the Logi Options Plus app, it doesn't even show up. So unless I am committing some massive user error, and please tell me if I am, the Brio 4K Stream Edition is a hard pass for me, at least on a Mac, which happens to be my setup. That might actually also explain why this one in particular came with a USB-A cable in the box and not a USB-C cable. To complete the image quality comparison, I decided to record some autofocus comparisons as well. And while both Opsbot cameras, as well as the Logitech MX Brio do a good job, the Tiny 2 Lite really nails it in my opinion. And the same goes for the low light test. Again, the Brio 4K streaming edition does not look good at all. And even on the MX Brio, things look super blown out as it tries to compensate for the low light. Both Opsbot cameras manage to keep a pretty natural looking image, even in a very dark studio. Now that leaves us with three cameras remaining, both Opsbot cameras and the Logitech MX Brio. And this one is definitely better compatible with my Mac. 
It showed up in the Logi Options Plus app at first try, including the customization settings, which we'll get back to in a second. I will say the image quality on this camera looks pretty good. The temperature on the image is a bit too cool for my taste, a bit too blue, if you will, but that can be easily adjusted in the app alongside the other standard options like brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. It does have HDR and that does need to be turned on, in my opinion, for the image to look good here in my studio. You can switch between manual focus and autofocus, and you can play around with the field of view and the crop. It can get pretty wide at 90 degrees, which is wider than the OpsBots, but I set it to 78 degrees to resemble the OpsBot cams better for the sake of the comparison. Once the field of view is cropped in a little, that does give you the option to sort of virtually reposition your camera since you have that extra headspace from the crop to play around with. But that's pretty much where the options end and no AI stuff and probably most notably, no tracking, no pan, no tilt. The Brio does sit flexibly on its clamp so you can move the angle around a bit, but it's all manual operations. Now, if we take a look at the OpsBot cams, you'll see that they both look very sharp and they have a warm tone to them out of the box. Of course, the white balance can be adjusted just like on the Brio, so you can set the cameras warmer or cooler as you prefer. Needless to say, both OpsBot cams have all the standard tweaking options as well, brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. But that really is where the comparison ends between the OpsBot and the Brio because from that point onward, the OpsBot cameras are really only just competing between themselves. The image quality is excellent and the level of customization is far beyond what the Brio can do. Personally, I prefer the image out of these cameras over the Logitech Brio, and if I'm being totally honest, I have to remind myself sometimes which one is which when I'm looking at both OpsBot cameras. What really sets them apart though, more than anything else, is two things. The pan and tilt functionality, most obviously. I mean, I didn't really realize what a luxury that is until I found myself manually adjusting the Brio all the time. And secondly, it is all the AI stuff. I mean, to me, not all of it is equally relevant. I don't really care about the lower body tracking mode or the headless mode, and I don't really need the desk mode or the whiteboard mode either. And that is exactly what the Tiny 2 Lite is lacking compared to the Tiny 2. But the AI tracking is super cool, and I really love the close-up feature. What that does is whenever you move around it will follow you and then it will zoom in again too so it always keeps you in frame just the same there's lots of features to tinker with in terms of image as well you can switch between hdr and non-hdr you can auto focus or manual focus auto expose or manual expose in other words you can make this process as automatic or as custom as you wish some people might also appreciate the hand gestures, which lets you turn things like tracking on and off, or it lets you zoom in and out, which is nice if you're not that close to your desk. Now, the beauty features are not for everyone. While I do appreciate being able to set my own level of bokeh, you know, the background blur you see, I don't really care about any of the beauty filters. But hey, it's 2024 and people do love their filters. So if you like to do some catfishing, you can knock yourself out in the beauty tab. Now I've only touched on a number of features in the OpsBot apps. Of course, there's a lot more, but I think the point's clear. With the Tiny 2 Lite, OpsBot is offering a camera which has best-in-class image quality with gimbal functionality and a whole host of AI features for a price that is similar to a camera like the Logitech Brio, which even though the image looks pretty great, or at least it does in my opinion, the options are quite limited and of course it does not come with auto tracking features, which is a big deal for me. Now, if I had to buy one of these cameras again, I would probably go for the Tiny 2 Lite. The image quality is so good that I often forgot which one was which. And to be completely honest with you, I don't think I need the extra features the Tiny 2 has. And if you do need those features, you already know you do since they serve some specific use case. And in that case, I'm sure you'll be happy to shell out the extra cash. But for everyone else that uses the webcam for video calls and maybe the occasional live stream, I'd say save yourself some cash, get the light. Guys, I hope the video was useful to you. If it was, please give it one of these. It really does make a difference. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.